Hi folks, this is Neil. I know it's been a while since I've uh, made a video and the reason why I waited so long to make the video is because I just wanted to um, to experience what I was going through um, to see if it happens on a consistent basis so I could explain to you guys exactly um, what my targeting has been like and so today I decided to make this video uh, because it really reached a point where it became like so ridiculous that I'm like, you know what? I gotta say something about this. I just cannot allow these people to keep on doing this to me or to keep on doing it to another targeted individual. So uh, what's exactly been going on? Um, they have damaged my photography equipment, uh, my flash, the, the part of, um, a second, let me just show it to you guys. Hold on a second. Just bear with me here. Uh, I'll show it to you guys in a minute. Right, so even though, um, I mean, my flash works, but, you know, this is a relatively new flash. And um, I don't know if this is part of the normal wear and tear. Um, but you know this should not be happening see once again here I mean I know it's kind of minor um, and all I have to do is basically just glue this thing back together but still it's just any little thing any little thing to um, to make it a nuisance basically um, you know they do all kinds of stuff and of course many of you guys know a lot of the stuff they do so I don't really have to go into um, full detail about this but here is the thing um, that really um, ticked me off um, in a sense. So I think a few videos back, um, maybe some months, I think four, five, actually five or six months ago, I posted uh, my results of, um, of my um, STD test. And I'm a single guy. I don't really date a whole lot, of course, because of my situation. So, you know, it's very, I don't, it's very, few and far in between that I actually get to meet someone um, and, and we connect you know, on some form of level and, and kind of get like, you know, intimate with each other. So I uh, was dating this this um, this young lady, you know, on and off. And of course, you know, it's all part of the target. I knew she was there to target me, but I wasn't sure. So I basically decided to, you know, okay, let's see what's, what's happening. So anyway, you guys know I'm an atheist. I'll, put up my atheist t-shirt and I'm not silent about it and why should I be silent about it you know when you have uh, religious people who are basically ignoring human rights human sovereignty trying to push the ideas push their way of life on other people violating people's sovereignty okay I have to say something about that when you have religious people who are trying to to put uh, religious ideas into laws and policies you know that's a that's a that's a, that's a very dangerous um, uh, idea a very dangerous thing to do because once again you know who religion are you gonna pick and of course you know most Americans are Christians so of course they're gonna say well the Christian uh, religion is correct but what about the Muslims what about the Hindus what about the Baha'is? What about, you know, the many other, um, you know, Wiccans, for example? What about those people? You know, are you going to put a little bit of what they believe into policy making? You know, when you have uh, religion who, religious people who wishes to, who wish to basically put creationism in, in science, it just doesn't work. You know, it, 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 the two just can't coexist. Because religion and religion ideas are based on myth, based on fear and control. You know, science is based on truth and reality. So, you know, you can't put fairy tales or made-up stories with truth because there's nothing true, truthful about these, um, you know, these religious doctrines. And this is what people need to understand. So, you know, me being an atheist, of course, and a very I wouldn't say too outspoken, but, you know, I am very outspoken when, when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know, when you start impacting um, public policies and, 
uh, in public schools and all that kind of stuff. It, it has no place. Religion has no place in government, and I've said it before in a previous video um, that Capitol Hill is not a church, and the White House is not the pastor's office or the pastor's house. Okay, the thing called separation of church and state is there for a reason. It's to protect you, so that you have the right to believe in what you believe in, and also protects me to have the right to not to believe in what you believe in. So you know, people want to get rid of this whole separation of church and state, but it's there for their protection as well as mine, as well as atheist protect, protection or agnostic or whatever. So you know, so here's the thing. Um, and of course, we all know that they use people of the opposite sex to target you, in a sense. And um, you know, in my targeting, the, the constant reoccurring theme seems to be that they want me to change something. You know, and um, I hate to go off on a tangent here, but um, I will. And just bear with me. You know, if I go off for a little bit, some of this stuff may be may seem far-fetched but you know I've come to realize that there are some things that I've I've known I've heard about that may seem far-fetched but it's an actual reality in terms of when you study the history of this country the people that run this country when you study the history of religious organizations such as the Catholic Church the Presbyterian Church uh, you know that's all um, you know that kind of stuff so you know you know basically that even though it may seem far-fetched that it, it is a possibility that this stuff might be happening so in, in my targeting there's a, a a recurrent theme where um when i was for, first well realized i been i was placed on a mind control and um i guess i was supposed to to supposedly and this is biblical base of course um d dealing with the um the New Testament and Revelations, and it talks about uh, you know the seven seals and all this kind of stuff. And so I guess for somewhere, somehow, some crazy nutty people, and I believe it's probably the Catholic Church, and I know that um, there are a lot of people in the government, especially the CIA, who are uh, you know big big into the catholic church big into the secret societies and all that kind of stuff not saying that um you know i don't think secret societies as far as um uh what you call the illuminati uh, i don't really believe that there's you know one conglomerate like a you know like a mob and, and that kind of stuff no i mean i i do believe that people have their own little secret societies and some go out of their way to try to make stuff happen and um whether good or bad but you know that's but as far as one global agenda for one specific um group of of individuals called the illuminati it's not it's not that it's not believable but i don't have or i don't have enough information on it to really speak and say well you know this Illuminati stuff really really exists okay but I will say that there are people out there of course you know if you're rich you have your your rich buddies and you get together and you do whatever whatever and um, you know whatever that may be hopefully it's something good and not bad but a lot of times there are people out there that that are just up to no good they are literally up to destroy people lives and um, if you want to call those people the Illuminati, then hey, okay, then I agree with you there. So, this whole thing about um, me being some sort of a seal um, to be uh, hunted or, you know, everything that I do, I'm being monitored and they're interpreting, they're interpreting my actions and my words as some sort of prophetic saying or action for them to move forward and do whatever it is that they're trying to do which to me is ludicrous it's crazy okay and these people are sick okay and we all know that um the cia and fbi uh, COINTELPRO, pro how they they monitor people and 
keep records and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, Cointel Pro basically now is um, is the Patriot Act in a sense. So anyway, um, you know, this recurrent theme about I'm supposed to change this and you know, and I'm like, change what? You know, that's like the whole thing, and people are constantly keep saying this to me, but no one is actually telling me what I need to change. Uh, you know, but I do know that it it, it it affects me in a sense that, um, you know, they're literally, literally trying to, I guess, turn me, uh, trying to turn me into uh, a, a, a homosexual person. Now, there's nothing wrong with homosexual. I have, I know a lot of people who are, and uh, but I'm not one of those. You know, never was, never will be, don't have any inclination, don't even think about stuff like that. Um, but that seems to be the thing that if I don't change whatever it is that they're trying to say um, or trying to get me to change, then, you know, I guess maybe I was supposed to um, be the seal that's supposed to uh, pick a certain things. I just say pick marriage or between a man and a woman. And, and first of all, when you when you put people on, when you in, induce some kind of hallucinogen into someone, and then trying to use their actions or, or trying to translate their actions or what they say at a particular time into what you want them to say or do. And then when they don't do it, then the whole thing goes haywire. What do you expect? You are, you are irrational to even do that to somebody and expect the results that you with your sound mind would do without telling that person, how could you, ex how, I mean, how can you really truly believe that that person would do exactly what you want them to do? You know, that to me is asinine. It is absolutely ridiculous, illogical, unreasonable. So, you know, this, this stuff is really, really taken as told. And like I said, if I go off on a tangent, I don't want to seem like I'm rambling. So I'm, I'm going to try to stick to this one subject um, instead of going back and forth. And like I said, a lot of stuff is religious based. Uh, my neighbors upstairs, of course, I, I think they're, they're probably um, part of some religious organization, pop, maybe the Church of Christ or, you know, um, the Catholic Church or something like that. But because these people are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I come out my car and this guy upstairs, of course, he has a crucifix chain around his neck. And his truck is parked next to my truck. He opens up the driver's side door and stands up. You know, when you get into your, your car, but stands up and not on the floor, but on the car seat. Not, not, the, not the seat seat, but the car floor, actually, on their edge stands up and he's like looking in my direction but his his face is looking upward towards the sky you know like like a high salute i'm not like a high salute or something without actually you know doing the salute sign and i'm like this dude is freaking out of his mind these people are out of their mind they have to be out of his mind like I said, a lot of stuff is biblical based because his girlfriend name is Mary. Right? Mary as in mother of Jesus Christ Mary. <laughs> so a lot of the names even of the people that I meet are biblical based. Um got my gym who just actually um, you know, when they started really, really heavily um uh, with the um with the targeting. Um meet folks like Emmanuel, Samuel, Jacob, um, women, uh, Ruth, Mary, um, what's the other, I'm trying to think of a, a, a Sarah, you know, stuff like that. So, and, and I mean, and it literally is even a guy, uh, Malachi, you know, so this stuff can it just it just seems like i said it seems far-fetched but literally i mean it's like 
they think that there's some spiritual warfare going on for my soul, you know, whether I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm like the seal who is like this empty seal who's supposed to pick either uh, uh, a Christianity or Islam or whatever. But, but here's the thing with these people. It doesn't matter which religion you pick. Some of them, one of them going to be mad at you. If you pick Christianity, then the people of Muslims are going to be mad at you. If you, put, if you put Islam, then the people who are Christians are going to be mad at you. So, you know, that's just to show you just the the ridiculousness of um, of my targeting. And, um, you know, it, it just goes beyond anything that I could imagine. Anything that um, beyond the scope of my imagination prior to me um, going through this kind of stuff because you telling me that you would waste all this time and effort on one person I know that there are other TIs who are going through stuff but we all have to learn about our own individual targeting okay and you have to study this kind of stuff and, and which I, I've done and, and I still continue to and you know, if you ever read books like um, *The Sword of the Lord*, um, books like uh, *The Dark Side of Christianity*, you know these these specific fractions of the Catholic Church or the Christian Church. You know, this is this is what they do. They literally believe in that nonsense, and they will do whatever they can to make these crazy prophecies happen. And, and that's that's the sad part about it is that they will destroy lives. I mean, they're about they would destroy this planet to see who God come down first, whether it's the Muslim God or whether it's the Christian God. And it's just it's just utterly utterly ridiculous that they don't even treasure or cherish human life. You know, their children lives, their their grandchildren lives, because. They're so hell bent on uh, uh, some new world heaven or whatnot, and, and telling you that life is horrible, and um, they can't wait to meet the Lord. But if life was so horrible, then why don't y'all just kill yourselves? Seriously. If the afterlife is where you really want to go so bad, why don't you just kill yourself and get out and leave the rest of us who want to live in peace on this beautiful planet? Okay. The heck alone, plain and simple. So, you know, it, it's it's just really, really weird. Um, you know, like I said, and then of course I know that you know some of uh, the religious viewers are going to view this video, and um, you know you might take offense to it. But I want you to honestly, I want you to take offense to it. Because I know there are a lot of Christians out there that really don't go along with this stuff. They don't participate in this. But they know about it and they stay quiet about it. And that to me is just as guilty as being a participant. So, you know, that kind of thing. But um, like I said, you know, with, with my targeting, it just seems like, you know, they're so hell-bent on... Um, on trying to make me feel angry or some sort of animosity towards the female gender and you know these females are participating in it which I don't understand um, so anyway the, the on Monday uh, my friend came over and um, of course you know we proceeded to engage in in sexual activities now here's the funny thing and that's why I say thank goodness I always wear a condom and I always try to get, you know, always have my partners tested and stuff like that. And I mean, sometimes, you know, stuff happens when the person may not, you may do stuff while the person's not tested, but, you know, you wear a condom and that kind of stuff. And literally, when I tell you that this woman, this woman had apparently in that same day had sex with another man who basically... Um, came inside of her okay because while we're having sex I'm like I noticed this you know this white stuff pouring out of her 
So I stopped and I was like, what the hell is this? And went to my went to the bathroom and grabbed a, um, a baby wipe and um, proceeded to you know to clean off um, you know my, my blanket and literally there was a piece of condom inside of this woman I mean can you and you know can you imagine so I brought it to her attention and then you know she says to me about um, something about uh, oh uh, I don't know how that guy is. you know I, it's not like I had sex you know today or anything like that now mind you prior conversation with this woman um, she had told me that she has had sex with anyone besides me in a very long time right so that goes to show you and also the fact that I'm from the Caribbean you know adds another um, dimension to my targeting because a lot of black Americans are very racist even towards you know other black folks whether it's black Africans black Caribbean people so we were having a conversation after the incident and um, she says to me you sound like you just got off the boat just got off the boat so I said oh yeah you mean the banana boat she said yeah I said yeah I, I, I did me and the rest of the coconuts so you know right then and there it just goes to show you that these women who are participating they don't they don't really care about me you know all they all they want to do is basically try to cause me some kind of pain some kind of harm um, in any way and this is one of the ways that they do it that you know you would have sex with some guy have the guy and excuse my French nut all up inside of you and then come and have sex with me with a piece of condom stuck up inside of you and then you want to talk about babies and all that kind of stuff what are you trying to are you trying to trap a brother are you trying to trick me to to go up inside of you raw while some dude you know sperm is inside of you so you can say okay well you know get pregnant and try to make my my life a living um, uh, a miserable life you know so these are the things that and I don't know if other TIs are going through any similar stuff like that but you know these people make a conscious decision to do this to other individuals and you know that to me is really really despicable you know really and truly and uh, let me just um, I actually have a couple of quotes that I wrote and I posted on my Facebook page and I would just read um, just a few of the quotes uh, to you guys and uh, just give me one second here while um, while I find the quote okay so the first quote says and you know, of course you know this is these quotes are written by me so there are some people out here who are simply looking to do to you the worst kind of harm these people are sick individuals who literally get off or are thrilled at the fact that they are consciously making an effort to harm not just an effort but are consciously harming other people just because their own lives are miserable and pathetic never back down from these people you don't have to stoop to their level but you have to let them know that you will not allow this shit to happen or to continue happening they are hateful they are a hateful ignorant wicked and despicable set of people that are not worthy of being members of the human race so never back down and always remember there is no progress without confrontation you know whether it's verbal physical whatever the case may be when you are being oppressed disrespected harmed okay the only way to stop this stuff 
is to confront those people and have them face up to what they're doing. So that was my first quote. Um, my second quote, and just give me a few more moments. Um, I posted this this second quote like a while back, so just give just bear with me while I um, while I search down my page for um, for that second quote. But you know, like I said, you know, for for this woman to to do something, I mean, and this is a woman. You know, this is a woman. But you know what? I'm not really surprised because my philosophy is that women and men are equal, the same. The only difference is physical attributes, but mentally we're basically the same. So a woman can do all the nasty, dirty, low down, filthy things that a lot of men do. And um, so I, you know, like I said, I, I didn't, I, I won't put it past her or, you know, the next person. But, you know, this is what they do. And, and the sad part about it is that, you know, we as human beings, you know, we, we need human contact. We need to feel cared about. We need to feel loved. We need to feel, um, you know, wanted in, in, in some form of fashion. So, you know, just, um, just for them using that and then trying to uh, put their whole biblical ideas in there like sending me subliminal message about um you know that i shouldn't have sex before i'm married and all that look i am 42 years old okay and there are a lot of people out there most of most of these christians have sex at a very young age okay they have more teen pregnancy than any other ethnic um, uh, religious based group okay in the entire world they have more STDs amongst themselves um, as more than any other religious group you know more divorces um, you know that kind of stuff more drug and alcoholism or, you know that I mean so for them to even try to play holier than thou with me you know that that's just not gonna that's just not gonna fly with me it's not gonna fly and 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 like i said i'm speaking out about this because i don't i want the next targeted individual to know what they're up against with these people these people are demented these people are psychopaths they're sick okay so my second quote um let me read it to you guys it basically says now, some people really need to understand the concept of human rights and sovereignty. That simply by being a human being, you are not the property of anyone or any being but yourselves because self-ownership is self-evident. Within every human being, there's a thing called a boundary, which means that your personal beliefs which are yours and whatever thought action or word which harbors within your boundary of self-containment you are not to forcefully or unwantedly impose on another human being you do not have the right to infringe on the sovereignty of another human being any thought action or words which leaves your personal boundary should be one that is invited and in accordance with respect and dignity to the other individual any thoughts actions or words that you wish to extend should be one of respect love dignity compassion sincerity honesty and a genuine feeling of care and positivity to enhance the lives of others and, and i wrote this because you know living in the bible belt like i said some people you know they're, they're so brainwashed it's so ingrained in them you know that if you don't they they fail to they they can't even look past that whole religious thing you could be the best person in the entire world like literally but if you're not part of their religion it doesn't matter how good you are it doesn't matter how kind how honest how truthful how respectful how given you are 
it really doesn't matter to them. All they care about is whether or not you're a Christian. Like literally. You could be the most despicable human being on the face of the earth. But if, if you're a Christian, then you are right with them. You know, you look at comments that you look at a guy like Bill Gates, who is, you know, one of the most charitable persons out there. They'll tell you in a minute, you don't believe in God or Jesus, oh, he's going to go to hell. Really? <laughs> you know how many lives this man has saved? You know how many people this man has put through college? Do you know how many, how many grants this man has given to science and other um, organizations to help humanity so you know that's what we're dealing with here with you know lot, with me what I'm dealing with here with these religious folks and um, you know and I know that like I said you know I try to stay away from them as much as possible but that's that's all that's available to me some of them are okay um, the ones I've known for a long time of course we don't get into any type of romantic relationships but um, the ones that I've known for a long time who try to come into my life in that area you know I try to be very careful but once in a while you know one will sneak in and like I said I don't date a whole lot so a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm by myself so but that, you know it might be one that sneak in every now and then and pull some crap like this like this last chick um, so, you know, I just want you guys to know that, um, you know, whatever your targeting is, learn about it. Don't be afraid to speak out on it. And, um, when people do you this type of dirty, dirty, low handed, despicable nonsense, you know, you, you let people know about it. You let people know about it. You let people know exactly what, what's happening to you. You let them know exactly what they're doing to you here. Okay, and and you know I'm not I'm not gonna move out of you know the Bible Belt. <laughs> I'm not. That's what they want. You know they send me these subliminal messages. Hey, you should move out. You know go back to New York. You know whatever, whatever. I'm not going to darn place. I'm staying right here. Exactly. I'm gonna be that thorn in your ass. It's like I said. I've never I've never done anything you know, remotely close to this to anyone. You know, I'm a kind person, very given, very respectful. But once again, like I said, I'm not going to keep quiet while you're trying to use your religious ideologies to impact legislature, to impact our school system. You know, that religion has no place in government and it should be kept out of government. I don't understand how you have these school boards and all the members of the school boards are freaking church pastors or church deacons or deaconesses or people on the choir choir board or whatever the case may be. These people are not in education. They should not be on the school board. Well, not all of them, but you know, most the majority of the people on the school boards should be educators. And this is how they're implementing some of the stuff. They're trying to sneak this stuff in under the radar. Well, anyway, I think I've had enough of my, my ranting and raving. <laughs> but um, like I said, uh, you know, and they're still t uh, tampering my food, my supplements. But, you know, whatever. Whatever. All I can do is, is, is be healthy, try to be healthy, exercise. I'm not ever going to quit going to the gym. I'm not ever going to quit lifting weights or whatever the case may be. So, you know, get that idea out your head. I don't care if I'm in a wheelchair. Okay? I, unless, you know, unless you paralyze me from the neck down, that's the only way that's going to happen. But until then, I'm going to keep going to the gym, keep working out. I'm going to keep going out on dates. And I'm going to keep going to the movies and, and doing my photography and every, all the things that I love. Because I am very happy. Now, that situation made me very unhappy. But other than that, I'm a happy individual. And I tell you, because I don't have the hang-ups that religious people have. You know, I don't have that, that, that hatred, that bigotry, 
that condescending attitude. You know, I, that ego. I don't have that. I respect people. I accept people. And I allow people to be themselves. As long as what you do does not infringe upon my rights as an individual or the rights of another individual. I don't care what you believe in. Plain and simple. So I will probably make another video soon. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I needed to get this off my, my chest. Um, I need to let you guys know the underhanded, despicable tactics that these people are using to try to get me to come to church or to get me to stay quiet about, um, you know, about me being an atheist and, and basically attacking um, some of these policies that they're trying to create. And one more thing before I um, before I log off, this whole Zimmerman situation, you know, this this guy being found not guilty when it has been proven that Zimmerman was the aggressor. Zimmerman was on the phone with 911 dispatch, in which dispatch says you are not to pursue this young man. Stay in your car. We will send someone over to check it out. Zimmerman said, F that shit. You got a hoodie on. You got a can of iced tea and a pack of Skittles. And he's running from me. And then he sees me. So I'm going to get out of my car. And I'm going to find him. And I'm going to say, hey, what are you doing in my neighborhood? And then if he gets loud, or whatever the case may be, then I'll put a bullet in his heart. And that's the thing people, you know, Zim, it's, it's very clear that Zimmerman approached Trayvon Martin. And most likely, he approached him in a threatening manner. Now, if you know your right to self-defense, you have what's called personal space, okay? Personal space. And I can't remember exactly how far the per or how close the person has to be to you to violate your personal state, uh, space in which if that person is in a threatening stance, and most likely probably what Zimmerman was in a threatening stance, I mean, you have a, your gun out or in your waist or whatever the case may be, and I was pretty sure he was showing that piece too. Or acting like he had a piece, so he was like Mr., you know, Mr. Tough Guy, I got a piece in my waist. So, violated this young man's personal space, okay? Trayvon had the right to defend himself. If Zimmerman approached him in a threatening manner, and Trayvon felt like he was about to get hit, or whatever the case may be, by this person, then he had a right to protect himself. So I, I I literally don't know how this man got off scot free, but that's the American justice system for you. And um, it's over and done with. And uh, you know this young man is no longer in the land of the living, and he will be missed, but he will not be forgotten. And also the young man, the 13 year old young man who was shot by the 76 year old. Because the 76-year-old claimed that this young man stole guns from his house and shot him in front of his mother and another person. And when the police searched the mother's house, they found no guns. And it's been it's been two years, two years, and this this incident has now um, go, is now going to trial. Whatever happened to the right to a fair and speedy trial? You know, even for an idiot like this, this old, this old man. Why? Why it takes two years? I understand that the, the the system is, but in a case like that, that should be. I don't even. I don't even understand what after a trial anyway. I mean, this man. Executed a 13 year old, a 13 year old executed, shot him in the gut or in the, in, the, in the front, the front torso, and then as a kid tried to run, shot him in the back and killed him. And then when the cops got here, saying, actually got on the phone saying, Yeah, I killed him. 
I shot him. I killed him. No remorse. So I want to see how that plays out in the courts and see what that verdict is. But, you know, there's one thing I want to say. I love every, I mean, people tell you this. I love everybody. I have people in my family that's white, that's Indian. I have people in my family of all, a wide gamut of colors, okay? But you can't stay quiet in the face of injustice. It's, what Zimmerman did was wrong. What this, these jurors did was wrong in not convicting Zimmerman, okay? So... You know, this is not an angry black man. I know some of you guys might be watching this video thinking, oh, he's just an ugly black man, you know, on a tirade. I'm not an ugly, angry black man at all. You know, justice, it's right is right or wrong is wrong. And, and you guys know, first of all, that, that that was wrong of Zimmerman. Especially when, you know, you're not a cop and dispatch tell you, do not follow this young man. Stay in your car. And they were sending someone right over. And then he took it upon... I think, you know, from that moment when he took it upon himself, he had a preconceived or premeditated thought of what he was going to do. But that's my two cents. So anyway, you guys have a great night. And um, like I said, whether you're a man or a woman, be careful of these people that they put in your life. Um, try to infiltrate your life. You know, just to um, to do stuff like this, really and truly. And um, you know, keep your peace, no matter how hard it may it may get. And believe me, it gets it gets hard for me. But knowing what I know, um, I've learned to keep my peace. So until someone physically attacks me or someone in in that form or fashion, I'll I'll keep my peace. Uh, but be careful of these disgusting people, like literally. I mean, that, that was just utterly disgusting. And she knew what she was doing. She knew she came there with a purpose. She knew she came there with a purpose of trying to humiliate me. She knew she came there with a purpose of trying to hurt me in any kind of way and, um, and seem pretty thrilled and ecstatic about it. <laughs> but, um, you know... Anyway, have a great night, and I uh, will make another video soon. Bye-bye.